Welcome everybody to another round of World of Tanks subscriber replays. My name as always is Maxwell and today's first video is from the user Mr. Malik. That's Mr. Malik and he's driving the Panzerkampfwagen 2. Lux on an encounter battle on the steps. Lux being a tier 4 light tank for the Germans. Thought I'd bring you a couple of lower tiered games today. Both of them going to be in light tanks but both of them going to be pretty damn good and pretty damn exciting if I do say so myself. So Mr. Malik straight away going to be heading all the way down the left hand flank. It's pretty good for a light tank to get this kind of matchmaking especially in the 9.0 update. Which is what this uh, replay is from. Has sighted quite a few tanks here. Did want to take cover behind the rocks just in case that M8A1 and the uh, the medium tanks behind him decided to have a go. But looks like he is getting away scot-free with this one. Heading back towards his own base now. Going to allow the fight to develop a little further and just see where he's needed. These light tanks, especially these ones that are supposed to be scouts, really, really do tend to shine when they are top tier in these kind of battles here. As you can see, another looks on the right-hand flank wreaking havoc here. So Mr. Malik going to stay down in the ditch here until his gun's reloaded. They're going to pop up and see if he can get a shot on him. Just crashed into a little rock there. A little bit unfortunate. Does spot the looks out. I'm going to try and track him and get some hits on him. Misses a couple, but lands a couple more. And then he's off after doing 30 damage. 61 damage, in fact, to the looks. He's taken a couple of hits from behind here. Got to play it carefully as these light tanks don't come with very much armor or very many hit points. But uh, those guys firing and Mr. Malik have revealed their position. So the allies hopefully camping in the back there can do something about it. Looks like that Lux has decided to drop back and is now starting a base capture off. Just putting a timer on the match there. Making sure that the allied team here can't just rest on the laurels. Get some lovely hits on that M3 Lee there. Taking off a good chunk of his hit points. Just going to sit behind this rock, allow his cannon to reload. Was just luring the Lee into firing, seeing if he is hanging around. Looks like the Lee has decided, nope, he's decided to fall back now. Is able to land another good volley onto the M3 Lee there, taking off 100% of his hit points. So that's an absolutely excellent, excellent move there from uh, Mr. Malik in the looks, just trolling that M3 Lee. Even though just playing the M3 Lee itself is a bit of a troll. Finds a T-46 here, just going to rock forwards and backwards, try and throw him off if he is aiming at the location. Is able to land some great damage onto him as well, and the T-46 just realises that he's not going to get the best of that situation and has to drop back. Got to be aware of this Covenanter, so although he doesn't have a fantastic cannon, the Lux doesn't have fantastic armour, so all those shots probably going to penetrate. Does see a Hetzer across the way there. Hetzer is well capable of doing a lot of damage to the Lux here. So just landed a couple of hits and then relocated. Looks like his allies have got his back though. And they're landing damage on the Hetzer. Just keeping an eye on his rear there so he can reverse far enough to get away from this Covenanter. Covenanter's obviously reloading. He's going to come in here and take off almost all of his hit points. It's a little bit unfortunate that Lux doesn't quite have enough shells in the canister to be able to finish the Covenanter off in one go, just hiding behind the rock while he reloads. And this Covenanter thinks he's going to be able to get out far enough to be able to land a shot on him. Unfortunately, that is not the case at all. And he's just going to back around the opposite side of the rock to try and reveal this Covenanter who's actually been taken out by the Sexton there. The artillery raining in from the sky to equalise that one. And now it's time to get behind the enemy lines in their capping, uh, in their camping locations. Does find the Hetzer here. Not going to try and take a Hetzer on from the front. Because uh, that thing's cannon will wreck anybody's day. Especially a light tank. Going to wait for the Hetzer to crest the hill. Thinking about firing at someone else. And this Hetzer thinks he's definitely going to have the best of the situation. So he's just going to come storming around this corner. He has to crest over a hill. And that exposes his low plate. And Mr. Malik just says, nope, no more for you. You're off to your garage. And then... Uh, Takes him out, lands a good couple of hits on that DW2. He's parked right up on the ridge, just exposing all of his lower plate there. Malik going to reload his cannon and then relocate. Don't want to pop out in the same place twice when you're a nice speedy light tank, because that's just offering your hit points up on a plate to the enemy. Just drive up, but it looks like both of those tanks have now fallen back. 
also having the same idea that they want to pop out in the same place twice. But uh, he's definitely got the drop on this DW2 here. Has taken a little bit of damage in return as a few of those shots did miss. DW2 misses his second shot and he's got a very long reload here uh, of 17 seconds. Decides to focus his attention on the T46 instead just because that's going to take longer to track down and allow his cannon to reload. He's got to come right over the top here. Gets around the side of the T46 and that's kill number three. DW2 just in two minds now what to do, whether to continue trying to close this guy down or head off in a different direction. Looks like he's going to try and close him down. Lured the DW2 into firing. Unfortunately, his own cannon isn't quite ready. So he's just going to have to wait. <coughs> DW2 trying to inch himself around the corner. And here he comes. Malik gets a great salvo off on him and takes him out. And that's kill number four. I don't think that DW2 realised what hit him there. As, uh, I think he was thinking he could just take the shots from the looks there and then fire one in return as it was though. Mr. Malik had enough in the chamber to be able to take off the remaining of his hit points. And that just teaches the DW2 who is boss. Ally still got two people in the cap circle but it looks like the T28 has at least pushed in there. EMX40 and T28 last spotted in this location. DW2 spotted behind him. But now it's going to be a little bit of an uphill struggle as it's two against one here. And this Panzer 3A looks like he's committed to the cap at this point here with the T28 taking out... Taking out the other capper, probably the best idea for this Panzer 3A to leave the cap circle via the back door, as it is, he's actually exiting via the front door, Malik not able to get a shot on him, and he's just got to reload this cannon while his DW2 closes, and it closes him down, indeed that T28 does take out the Panzer 3A here, not a big surprise there. Fires off a salvo at the DW2 as he's moving in, but it's not quite enough to land any shots there, DW2 looks like he's kind of... Pausing and having a little bit of a think, maybe either waiting for his camo to kick back in or waiting for his allies to press in with him, as that would definitely be the smart thing to wait for that EMX-40 and the T-28 to catch up. Going to see if he is still down in that ditch. Gets spotted out here. Doesn't see the DW-2, so he's been spotted by somebody else. Maybe that EMX-40 in the back of the T-28's caught up already. Does find the DW-2 here. Lands a good few hits. Just one more would have been enough to take him out, but not quite there. Does take one in return, which he can't really afford to do right now. Looks like somebody has started a base capture now. I would have thought that's probably the AMX 40 as the T28 would have been able to into the cap circle a lot sooner than this. Just got to land one more good solid shot on this DW2, but it looks like he's playing it very cagey now. Malik might have to go close him down. Does find him now, going to try and juke around the side of him, takes him out, and here's the AMX-40 across the way there. <coughs> Malik's reloading his cannon, so he's not able to get any shots on him, and even if he did have a loaded cannon, the AMX-40 from the front is a bit of a tough cookie to crack. So he's just going to keep him spotted, see what direction he's coming in from, going to try and get around the sides and rear. Unfortunately, the AMX-40 spots him at the last second, and he's able just to juke and get his front armour on target, and I don't think he's going to have the penetration to get through the front armour of this AMX-40. His penetration on paper is 95, but the AMX-40 is so well sloped and rounded that the shots just tend to bounce no matter what. Decides to have a change of heart here, and he's going to go for the cap circle and the T-28 first. Looks like that T-28 is only on 100 and some hit points. So going to come try and catch him by surprise. T-28 last time he saw the looks here, he was dueling with the EMX-40, finds T-28, unleashes his shots, takes him out, that's kill number 6 and a well deserved Top Gun medal and that just leaves himself and this EMX-40 now, we're going to have to play a masterful game of cat and mouse, this EMX-40 closing in with 199 hit points, I think he might have enough to survive a full burst from the looks, he's had such a good game now, he doesn't want to leave anything to chance whatsoever, he doesn't want to throw away any of the good work that he's already done, so just switching that one up to premium shells here, want to guarantee a penetration on this guy, let's have a look, 110 millimetres of penetration, but the AMX-40 is a strange tank, like I said, with it having such great sloping and uh, curving on the armour, it does tend to bounce some ridiculous shots that it should really have no right bouncing. 
Both of these tanks being light, the MX-40 though, not really known for its speed or agility. It has a decent traverse speed turning on the spot, but uh, in a straight line, this thing is not the fastest of tanks. The Lux should be able to just dance around him like a ballerina. Does spot him out from the side here. Don't think the AMX-40 knows that he's here. Unleashes a volley there. Doesn't want to spend any time aiming as that AMX-40 really will do more damage to him in return. He can't afford to take any damage whatsoever if he wants to win this one. Probably still going to be spotted out here so the AMX-40 knows which direction he's heading. Malik just going to be trying to circle all the way around him. Trying to keep eyes on him as well. Once he's faded from view, this is his opportunity to come at him from a position that's not really expected. The AMX-40 possibly thinks he's going to be coming straight over the hill. Going to be trying to come all the way around beside him. Does get his rear armor here. Going to spend the time aiming. Takes his shots. Takes him out. And picks up kill number seven and secures victory for his team. So absolutely awesome replay there from Mr. Malik driving his Panzer Kampfwagen 2. Looks... And uh, picking up six kills and plenty of damage. So awesome replay from you. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget to stick around because as always the score screens in another game are coming right up. And our second replay of the day is from the user Pathologic. That's Pathologic, and he's driving the M5A1 Stewart on a standard battle on Wide Park. M5A1 Stewart being a tier 4 light tank for the Chinese. It's the same model as the M5 Stewart. Obviously doesn't get the same derp cannon though, and is for the Chinese line instead of the American. Still a pretty damn good light tank though, and this can be used to great effect when scouting. But when you are the top tier tank in the match, you're able to perform some. Uh, you're able to perform pretty damn well and pull off some amazing plays. Personally, I would I prefer the M5 Stewart just because of that derp cannon. When you are top tier in a tier four battle with that cannon, you're able just to wreak havoc upon your enemies who aren't expecting it whatsoever. So straight away, going to be heading over to the left hand flank and covering off the subway and uh, trying to offer some assistance to his allies. But it looks like they've got a suicidal headser and a T46 and another T46 who are just. Uh, Hell bent on charging straight into the enemy lines. It's kind of working out for them at the moment as they have now secured their first kill. Pathologic going to be setting up on the train tracks in an effort to try and cover off his allies. Does spot out a Covenanter here. It's a good shot onto him. The cannon on this thing doesn't have fantastic alpha, but well, for its tier it has pretty damn good alpha and has good penetration as well. There isn't really anybody on the enemy team except for that Matilda that he's going to have any trouble penetrating whatsoever. Having a couple of blind shots there just in case somebody is left in the area. Doesn't look like there's anybody here as he comes all the way out and not able to spot anybody. That Hetzer and the two T-46s are still alive as well. One of them deep in enemy territory. You can see the BT-7 tracking back in an effort to try and help out his allies. And that SU-76 is getting way, way deep. And uh, Pathologic going to offer some support here. Finds the T-46 here. Going to have a couple of shots at him. And this T-46 doesn't react in time. And uh, he's probably going to get himself taken out here. He doesn't realise the trouble that he's in. Realises now, but it is way, way too late. It looks like that BT-7 has made it all the way back and was able to take out the T-46 there. And hopefully they can just get some revenge for his fallen comrade. Looks like he doesn't quite have the gun depression to get anything on this BT-7, but he might be able to get a shot on this T-28, who's currently dueling with their Matilda. Matilda should have the better of that one because the T-28 is going to find it difficult to penetrate the front armour of a Matilda. Looks like he is picking out the weak spots fairly easily though. He's only got 77 hit points left so a good high roll from Pathologic should be enough to take out this T-28. But looks like the Matilda has already fallen now. T-28 pokes himself out to get a shot on somebody else. Don't know if that shot landed or just low, rolled low. Going to continue peppering the area with shells just in case. Looks like a Covenanter has now snuck over the top of the train tracks. Is now pressuring the allied area. That Covenanter's 
Auto Loader doing some good work, taking a little bit of hit points off of Pathologic, but not much at all. He's able to finish him off and pick up his second kill now. Game not going particularly well for the Allies, although he's got the best of this Panzer 3A at the moment. But as you can see, they are currently losing 8 kills to 11. Looks like that push on the left-hand flank really didn't work out for the best. Now he's going to be dealing with his BT-7. He's got the reload speed and got the accuracy to be able to take him out without taking any damage in return, which is always, always what you want. To be able to take out your opponent without taking any damage in return. That T-28 still playing at KG in the distance there. He's not able to get into cover in time. And in fact, he's trying to reverse in vain. Does get one shot back on Pathologic, but Pathologic is able to take him out and picks up kill number four now. Looks like this Panzer three is still hanging around in the centre train line there. Did try and take a shot through the train cars. That one just about bounced, which is pretty damn lucky for Pathologic as he starts to make his escape. You can see they're also not faring particularly well on that right-hand flank. They have got that Hetzer deep in enemy territory, but that Panzer 1C was making a move. Got a Covenant they're spotting out in the centre. Anybody comes over the train line, hopefully he can do some work on them. Evened up the score just a little bit now at 10 kills to 12. Now 10 kills to 13 as that Covenant dies with no return fire. The Hetzer is deciding to make a foolhardy push all on his own now. And I can't see it being too long before he himself gets taken out. He is able to eliminate the M2 medium. He's got a Chi He and a Matilda to contend with. And Pathologic and his Stuart here has got a Panzer 1C somewhere in the area. Not really sure. He was last spotted on the train line. He may be coming up behind the Hetzer to assist his allies over there. But now with that Matil Matilda taking out the Hetzer. The en enemy team is going to be free now to just come and hunt him down. It's just himself against four tanks here. Hands a 3A last spot on the train lines. But I've taken out that Covenanter. You can almost guarantee that he's going to be making moves over the train line to come in and try and hunt down Pathologic. He's just trying to cover off his base here. Hanging back away from the cap circle. Trying to wait for someone to come in. Chi he has been spotted out. One good hit takes him out. And that's kill number five. So the guys are going to know where he is now. This Panzer 3A closing in from the left-hand side. I'm uh, not really sure where this Panzer 1C is. All I can really think is that he headed all the way down the right-hand flank, down the zero line, to try and offer some support against that Hetzer. But uh, didn't wasn't needed in the end. There we go. Spots out the Panzer 1C. And he is just on the other side of this building. Got to play it carefully, though. Because uh, if he if he Panzer 1C gets the rear armor of the steward, he's going to be able to do some good work. But in the end, the Panzer 1C thinks that he can just duel with the M5 steward when he ha doesn't have the penetration. M5 steward, he decides to close him down and then decides to circle all the way around the Panzer 1C because he was taking shots in the rear from that Panzer 3A. Gets into cover, takes out the Panzer 1C. Now we can focus all of his attention on this Panzer 3A here. Got to get himself into position. Going to take the same position that he was in before, hiding in this building, using it as cover. But looks like the Panzer 3A was possibly ready for that, even though he drives himself into the open to get himself killed. And that's kill number seven. Now just got to contend with this Matilda. All he can really hope for is that the Matilda is still all the way on that right-hand flank there. And, uh going to be heading down past the train lines. Not really sure why he's zooming the camera in and out continuously, so I'm going to take control of that camera so that you don't feel sick. He's going to be heading all the way down this left-hand flank, but to be honest, I think that Matilda's going to be making his way down the zero line. Just having a little pause here, just in case. I think he's making his way towards the cap circle. It's probably about 50-50 whether the Matilda has decided to move down the zero line to assist when his allies were trying for that base capture, or whether he's done the same thing that Pathologic's done and dropped back behind the cap circle in an effort to try and cover off the base capture. He is hiding in the area. Pathologic should spot him out here. But it looks like he hasn't seen anybody just yet, so it's time to make a tentative move towards that cap circle just in case. Pathologic's not going to have an easy time penetrating the armor of that Matilda, which is why he's playing it so cagey. 
does finally decide to make his move and put himself in the cap circle. Now he's just got to play the waiting game and see whether the Matilda is hiding in the back there in the buildings. No, there we go. Matilda was actually behind the allied cap circle and he's now put himself in the base capture circle on the other side of the map. Realises now that he's not going to be able to get a base capture off himself because of the time remaining. So you can tell he's obviously now making a B line straight down the 5 line. Going to be heading towards his own base in an effort to try and decap. You can see Pathologic just trying to keep the hill between himself and the train line. That Matilda is going to head over. Possibly going to get here in time. But you can see Pathologic not wanting to go out and duel with him. Because at the end of the day, a Matilda is easily going to have the better of that situation. And he comes over the train line. But he's too far to the left here. And that hill is just going to stay in his way all the way to the cap circle. Really, he should have come to the right-hand side of that hill and came over the train line at a slightly different angle as it is. That little mistake there means that Pathologic picks up the victory and seven kills. So absolutely awesome replay from you. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget, guys, if you've got yourself a great replay, please send that into replay at screenreality.com. Link for that is in the description. Just send in the email the link to the What Replay website website or attach the replay file itself so I can have a look at that one. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, informative, you enjoyed it or you learned something, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button because there's a lot more World of Tanks content on this channel. If you want to join the discussion and let me know what you thought of the two replays, then leave a comment in the comment section below. This has been World of Tanks, I've been Maxwell and I will catch you guys next time.